Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda and today I came out to my garden because I need some green onions for a recipe that I am making. I am preparing some barbecue soy curls. I am having some uh, potato salad and some beans. These beans are lima beans, but I have prepared them like barbecue baked beans because I did not have any of the other beans and uh, the navy beans that you use to make baked beans. So I just wanted to have some baked beans on the side. So these are not baked, but I put them in my Instant Pot and flavored them. So they have the flavor of baked beans, but they are lima beans. And I also made a spaghetti salad. So I came out to get green onions because I am going to be adding them to my spaghetti salad. But someone had asked me about a um, recipe that I talked about doing one of my videos where I make a vegan coleslaw. And it is very simple, but since I was asked about it, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make that video uh, today. I'm gonna go ahead and add that recipe to this video. And uh, so first I'm gonna get my green onions for my spaghetti salad. So y'all, let's get started. Okay, so here are some green onions and I don't need very much. Matter of fact, I think that this would be enough. These two pieces right here would be enough. Okay, y'all, I'm back inside and I have my soy curls right here. This is what soy curls look like. They are uh, really flimsy looking right now, but when I first took them out, they were hard. And so now I sit them and let them get hydrated. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add them to this pan that I have put some olive oil in. I'm gonna go ahead and add some onions first. Go ahead and get my onions in. And I'm gonna let them saute for a moment. And after you saute your onions for a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in my soy curls with the juice that is in here. I'm go ahead and get my seasonings out of the bottom. Well, make sure you got enough uh, juices in here because this is going to cook for a while. Um, you can either add vegetable broth or some water, but you may have to uh, increase your seasonings a little bit once you water it down. So what I'm going to do, because I want mine to have more liquids in here than this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some more of my uh, liquid smoke. So I wanted to have that smoky barbecue flavor. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the smoked paprika. You can add more of your onion powder, your garlic powder, whichever seasoning that you chose to add to yours. I had um, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, I did not add any salt, but I did add some balsamic vinegar to give it some extra flavor and some of the uh, coconut aminos. I also have curry powder in here. So it just uh, depends on you what uh, flavors you want in your soy curls to give it a barbecue. Cause I'm gonna make this into like a barbecue uh, beef sandwich. So you're gonna let it cook for a while and then you're gonna add your barbecue sauce. You wanna make sure you watch this very closely because you do not want it to burn. That will ruin your dish if you burn it. So I mostly stick really close by whenever I'm preparing some soy curls. And you can use these soy curls in so many different recipes. They are great for tacos. You can cook this meat up with your taco seasonings and put it in your taco shell or in your burrito and it is absolutely delicious. Okay, you can use whatever kind of barbecue sauce you want. You can make your own. Sometimes I make my own, but today I'm just gonna add some of this Kraft Original in here. And I like it saucy. I'm gonna leave a little bit in case I had to add a little bit more to my baked beans. I'm 
And then I'm gonna cook this low and slow until it gets to the thickness that I want because it's already basically done, but I just don't want it this juicy. I want it to be where I can put it on a sandwich and my sauce is not running everywhere. So I'm just gonna cook this now until it thickens up. So that's how you make your barbecue soy curls for sandwiches or whatever other recipes that you like. Okay, y'all, so I have my uh, cabbage and my carrots all shredded up. Didn't get them that fine, but uh, it's shredded up. And so I also want to show you all what my beans are looking like. And these are some lima beans that I decided I was going to use since I did not have any of the other beans that you use, which are navy beans, are best uh, as far as I con I'm concerned to make your baked beans. But this is what my beans are looking like. Let me get a larger spoon so that you all can see. I got a little baby spoon there. Yeah. Big spoon. And y'all, I love the Instant Pot. The Instant Pot is awesome. Okay, so this is what those beans are looking like. And they are really, really hot because they just finished cooking. But as these beans begin to cool, they will thicken up. I put some molasses in here and I did not add any sugars because I didn't want to put any sugar in there. But uh, y'all, one thing that I do add a little sugar to, and that is my coleslaw. Because I like the way that I have always had my coleslaw to taste. And so I just kind of stuck to that recipe. And I'm sure that there is some way that I could go ahead and, and do this. I could add some honey or some... Um, well, you know, as far as some people are concerned, honey is not vegan, but I, I, I don't consider honey not to be vegan because the bees don't, well, we're not going to get into that. But we're going to, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. That is what I was getting at. I'm adding a little bit of sugar to this, but what I use is the Hellman's Vegan Mayonnaise. And this is some good stuff. If you all have not tried this, I know a lot of vegans don't like to use uh, products like this, and you know, I understand that. But I do use uh, Hellman's. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put some in. I don't like it too uh, mayonnaise -y, So I'm just going to put, uh, that looks like about three tablespoons of mayonnaise. I, as I said, I like to add a little sugar. And see, this is probably a, uh, that's probably a teaspoon of sugar. I'm just going to add a little bit in. Maybe a more, that, that may have been more than a teaspoon, but I didn't put all of that in. And then I like to add some white vinegar. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white vinegar. That's just like a little dash. And I think I add onion powder and garlic powder to just about everything. Not everything, but just about everything. So I am going to add a little onion powder. And a little bit of garlic powder. And that was probably about a um, teaspoon. And it all depends on the amount that you are making. So uh, your amount, may, you may have to put a tablespoon because you may be making a big batch. So it just depends on how much you're making. Uh, onion powder and garlic powder. Both are in. And just a little bit of black pepper. You just want to stir it all together. And I didn't put that much mayonnaise in here, but as you're stirring it, you might see that you might need some more mayonnaise, but it's, you can always add some more, but it's hard, you know, if you put too much in. And then one thing about the slaw, once it's sitting in the refrigerator for a while, it will begin to... Uh, Seems like it will get more. What's the word I want to use? Is it soupy? Y'all see, I still have some big pieces in here. 
I think I'm going to have to invest in another uh, food chopper, a shredder, because that one, that shredder thinks that it, it wanted to try to make me shred this by hand, but that wasn't about to happen today. But as you can see, that flour has a nice consistency to it. It is not too, there's not too much mayonnaise on it. I just don't like a whole lot of mayonnaise because as I said, it's going to sit in the refrigerator and it is going to absorb this mayonnaise. And you all may have noticed I did not add any salt to it. So, uh, this is, this is finished. That's it y'all. So, you know, I wish I had a real fancy recipe for you all, but I do not. There are a lot of recipes out there, and sometimes I may try some of those. I may try some of those later on when we uh, start doing more vegan recipes. Uh, because there are a lot of delicious salads, and I love salads. And so we can we can make some uh, other recipes. But this is, truthfully, the way that I make my coleslaw. So y'all, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to plate it up. Although I usually like my coleslaw to sit in a refrigerator and get really chilled before I even attempt to eat any of it. But we're going to go ahead and plate this up. So I'm going to go ahead and check out this barbecue because the barbecue is still cooking. Okay, so you can see this barbecue is thickening up. And that's what I wanted to do. It's, it's, it's more thick. That's what I wanted it to do. Get more thick. It's still not as thick as I want it to get. So it will be thickening up. But I'm going to go ahead and toast me up a bun. And maybe by that time, it'll be thick enough. Okay, so here it goes. I'm plating it up. Got my bun with my little toasted bun. And I'm going to put my soy curls on there. I already got me some beans. And this is the spaghetti salad. I'm just going to put a little bit of that. I'm just going to put a little bit of everything. Go ahead and give me some coleslaw. Y'all, this is my favorite. I love potato salad. Y'all, if you ever put any um, olives in your potato salad, it is so delicious. But y'all, seriously, although that looks uh, really nice plated up, that's not the way I'm going to eat this. That coleslaw is going on to that barbecue sandwich. So let's try everything out. Okay, y'all got me some kombucha. To wash this all down with, this is a blueberry kombucha. And so now let's taste it. Okay, what do I want to taste first? Like I told y'all, really, I'm going to taste this coleslaw first, but I want this coleslaw on this sandwich. That coleslaw reminds me of one of those coleslaws at one of those chicken places. I'm going to taste these beans. I cook those beans for a couple hours in the Instant Pot because I like mine for a meal like this. I want them soft. Sometimes I'll cook mine for just an hour if I just want some beans and I'm going to add to a salad or something like that. But when I'm eating a meal like this, I want my beans soft. So, they're soft. Okay, let's try this macaroni, this spaghetti salad. I know a lot of people don't eat this salad as a spaghetti salad. A lot of people just eat it as a pasta salad and they'll use a different kind of, ooh, that's a lot, y'all. I don't know. Y'all think I should put some of this back? Might be hard to get all this in my mouth. But a lot of people just use pastas. Then they'll use, you know, I guess probably because it's easier to eat than Trying to get all this spaghetti in your mouth, but we're gonna go for this. Mm-hmm. I said the potato salad was my favorite, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's go here to the potato salad. Y'all, like I said, those Spanish olives, the one with those pimentos in the middle. I got the sliced ones this time. 
and I put them in here, but I always put uh, olives in my potato salad. If you never tried it, try it. And you got people that maybe don't like olives, just don't, you know, don't put them in there so large. They won't know that. They'll just know this potato salad is good. That's all they, the only thing they gonna know is it's good. What you do to the potato salad? I can just end the video right here and just go. Yeah, that potato salad is still my favorite. And I don't do a lot to my potato salad either. Potato salad got some relish, the sweet relish in there, and um, onions, bell peppers, and those olives. And then I put a, I put some mustard in it and use that uh, Hellman's vegan mayonnaise. And some vinegar. Oh, yeah, I do. I put a little bit of sugar in that. There's not a lot of things that I put sugar in, y'all. But the, uh, this um, potato salad and this coleslaw, I just never got away from it. So, um, y'all tell me what y'all think I can put in there that will not lose the taste. Y'all see how I like it. So, I don't want to lose the taste. You know, I, I know you got to cut back on the sugar. But you saw I only put a little bit in there, too. But, y'all, now, okay, I'm going to taste one of these soy curl without... I'm sorry for noise. Y'all see that meaty texture? It's it's got a chew, got a bite, and it's been marinated, so it's got the flavor. It's all that you need if for if you're trying to uh, cut back on eating meat. And I get these from Butler. You can get soy curls from uh, Amazon. You can go on Amazon and look for them. They're going to be still Butler soy curls. And you can get them in different sizes. I order mine from Butler and I get the big. Mine's like a, I think it's 12 pounds. But 12 pounds is a big, big bag. And um, that bag, I've had that bag for, I know, probably six months. And I just take the whole bag and put it over in my freezer. And whenever I want some, I just go over there and get some out and put them in a bowl and marinate them. And y'all, I'm telling you, I use them for so many different recipes. And I will be sharing some of those recipes with you all. But I did. I toasted my bun, y'all. And so now, this coleslaw is going on to this sandwich. And I'm going to have to go because it's going to get real up in here, y'all. So... I love you all. Hope that you enjoyed this video. You give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that notification so you'll be notified when I upload again. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.